In this episode of Linux News Log, Hulu brings remote-controlled streaming to Linux, Motorola quits the Linux Mobile Foundation, and how to hack your Android phone. Quicksurf Internet Media presents Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio BR2 at Quicksurf Internet Media. This is episode number 186 of Linux News Log. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to www.techpodcast.com. And if you like any of my shows, you will certainly find other technology-related shows over there as well. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off at Lifehacker, uh, they have a story, Hulu Desktop Brings Remote-Controlled Streaming to Linux. This is pretty cool. Um, Hulu has taken their design for a widescreen remote-friendly desktop viewer and released it for Linux-powered systems, giving anyone with an open-source media center or Linux laptop an easier way to watch streaming video clips and movies on their much bigger screen. This is nothing but good. I'm a huge fan of Hulu. This is this is pretty awesome. So, um, <clears throat> according to the article here on Lifehacker, from the looks of it, and they have a screenshot up, looks and acts just like the Mac and Windows versions. You can flip between uh, TV episodes and clips, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Pretty sweet stuff. So uh, definitely uh, check this out for sure. Let's go ahead and talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. I want to tell you about a way to save time and money and make you look like a hero to your clients or colleagues. The solution is GoToAssist Express. It's easy and secure remote support solution. It's purpose-built for small businesses and professionals who need to support clients. One of the best things about GoToAssist is you don't have to pre-install software on your customers' machines, so you can instantly start supporting them online. Plus, with GoToAssist Express unattended support with your customer's permission, you can even support customers when they are away from their computer, which I find very handy myself. I want you to try out GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. It's very simple to do. For this special offer, you must visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. That's gotoassist.com slash techpodcast for a free trial. All right, the next story that we have uh, for this segment is from Electronista, Gadgets for Geeks. And it's entitled, uh, Motorola Quits Linmo Foundation Board. Uh, Motorola has quit the Linmo Foundation, the mobile Linux group of which it was a founding member, according to a Thursday report. Christy Watt, the VP of Software Applications and Ecosystems at Motorola, said on Tuesday she has given up the board of the foundation. The company will instead remain as an associate member and retain an active role as a contributing member. So... This makes me wonder uh, what's going on over there. From CIOL.com, Red Hat and Microsoft extend their support for virtualization. This is from Mumbai, India. Red Hat, a provider of open source solutions, today announced that customers can now deploy fully supported virtualization environments that combine Microsoft Windows Server and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So this is primarily a response for demand, uh, customer demand for interoperability in their IT environments. Red Hat and Microsoft have completed testing and validation for mutual customers using server virtualization. Joint support from Red Hat and Microsoft for these configurations is available. Kind of cool. Definitely uh, check it out if uh, you are one of those developers. From the register, Sun adds Oracle Linux to Ops Tools. This is kind of interesting. Sun Microsystems XVM Server Virtualization Hypervisor has not yet seen the light of day as a commercial product, but the company is continuing to enhance the management tool. Now the latest version of Ops Center has arrived, featuring enhancements for running Solaris-based virtualization. Something um, I was wondering if they would do, actually. Perhaps more significantly, given the endorsement that Oracle has slapped on the new 
Ops Center 2.5 system management tool. It's reasonable to guess that the Ops Center will survive in some shape or form of the uh, 7.4 billion acquisition by Oracle of Sun. Now, that's another thing that I've been kind of following because Sun does a lot of Java stuff. I'm a Java programmer. Uh, you find a lot of open source Java software. Lots of uh, Apache Tomcat is the foremost one that comes to mind, but there's a ton of code out there written in Java that's free and open source, not to mention that Java itself has been relatively open sourced by Sun. So kind of interesting. We'll see uh, how what, what goes with this. Also from the register, Debian is to harness FreeBSD with a kernel port. The Debian project is planning a FreeBSD kernel of its distro that will help fine-tune its Linux for websites of critical network-based deployments. The project members said Wednesday that the next version of Debian, called Squeeze, will see a port to the FreeBSD kernel, the first time Debian has been put on FreeBSD. This, personally, I find very interesting because one of the machines out of the several that I have here runs FreeBSD. And um, I've been doing a lot of work with it uh, for one of my little internal projects here. Um, and it'll be interesting to see uh, if I can get a Linux distro that's got FreeBSD's kernel and maybe a bunch of FreeBSD tools, but also has... Debian kind of on top of it instead of using the Linux kernel it's using FreeBSD that would just be awesome I'd love to see something like that so I'll, I'm going to be watching this really closely and uh, see uh, what what comes of that by all means definitely all right for our how-to segment I found this article on Boing Boing it's entitled how to hack your Android phone and turn it into a Wi-Fi access point fed by the 3G modem, basically how to turn it into one of those MiFi devices that we keep seeing around, which is pretty cool. As the article points out, Android is based on a free slash open Linux and hackers have extracted the security information necessary to load your own OS on the phone. So with an open hackable OS and an open bootloader, the tethering problem is simple to solve. Just install your own OS that includes all the same code as the factory fresh G1 with the anti-tethering stuff deleted. You can even bridge the 3G to the Wi-Fi in your phone, turning your G1 into a self-contained all-wireless Wi-Fi access point. I thought you might find this interesting. If you have a G1 phone, you can turn it into a MiFi device. Woohoo! That's pretty much it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Check us out at linux.quicksurf.com. You can also get, and you might want to check this out, you can also get a video version, iPod compatible, MPEG-4, and an HD MPEG-4 that's 30 frames a second and uh, 3 megabits a second. So it's relatively high quality 720p HD uh, MPEG. MPEG-4 video file, in addition to the MP3 and Og Vorbis. Blog World New Media Expo, don't know if I'm going to make it. Um, I'm still uh, trying to work that out. If I do make it, it's only going to be on Saturday, and I'll, I'm going to make it a day trip. I'm going to fly in, be there for five or six hours, and then fly back out. Uh, work has been a little rough. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this edition of Linux News Log. I thank you for listening and watching, and I will see all of you next week. Mm -hmm.